friends and welcome to another sunny side design tutorial we are here in little miss's room doing the very next project in her room which is a french day bed that we're working on so we're going to show you what we purchased on the facebook marketplace we purchased um, two french style twin beds that we are going to turn into a true french day bed and so you'll see here that we've stripped the wood and prepped it um, for waxing. Right here we did not strip the wood because, strip the finish off, we're going to upholster this part, so it didn't really need to be done. But you can see, it's kind of ugly. That was an <laughs> ugly paint finish. Okay, this was think? a finish from the 1950s or early 60s with that lovely kind of yellowy glaze they put over everything. Yeah, so it's ugly and it probably really is the true finish, original finish, so yeah. it's pretty old. It is, but we're gonna turn this into really a beautiful piece. We are going to apply a clear wax to this part of the wood that we have stripped the paint off. And when you apply wax, you're just going to use a circular motion and push it in. We want it to get into the grooves of the wood. And we're gonna apply this clear wax because we love the color that we're getting of this natural wood. And it also dries oh. Flat, so it won't yeah, be it's, shiny it, like this. Right. Um, and then once we get the clear wax on the entire piece, we're gonna come back in with some white wax and we're going to apply that in just a few areas to highlight some of the like details, the yeah. detail that we're getting on this bed. We've applied the clear wax to the entire um, wood surface where we had stripped off the paint. And now I'm going to take some white wax. And we actually ran, last time we were doing a project, we actually ran out of white wax. So we just made some of our own by um, taking some clear wax and mixing in a little bit of chalk paint. So we're gonna take that and we're gonna work it in to these grooved, the details area. And just kind of work that in there. And then let's kind of, we don't want to put too much white on. We just wanted to show that, oh, maybe there was some white paint that got left on this project. <laughs> just a little bit like that. Once the wax has cured overnight, or really just dry, but we let it cure overnight, it is time to buff it. This just removes any excess wax so it's not sticky. It does give your piece just a little bit of a sheen gives it a smooth finish. You can see the detailing right in here where we did the white wax, looks really nice. Makes it look a little aged and worn. And that is how we buff, super easy. We did have to do a little bit of modifying on this bed. The legs of the headboard um, did not have that cute French curve. Just the that part was on the footboard of the bed. And so we took a skill saw and cut off the legs of the headboard so that they were flush with the bottom of that um, crossboard that went across the headboard. And we did that on all of the are both pieces of the headboard so that it would be flush and we are going to mount that to the legs of the footboard. The sideboards of um, this bed had just straight boards um, that connected the footboard to the headboard and because that was going to now be the front that we would see on this bed when it's a day bed um, we wanted to cut a little bit of a decorative edge and so um, we took the uh, pattern that was on the footboard and transferred it on to one of the sideboard pieces um, traced it on and then we took a jigsaw and cut out that pattern so that we would have that um, design all the way across the front. Um, we found out this was not quite as easy as we thought and um, you'll see in a minute that it's a little bit jaggedy and <laughs> we'll remedy that and it'll be great when it's all finished. 
So it turns out that using this jigsaw is a little bit harder than you think. I'm not a professional woodworker, but you know what? It's still gonna work out. So the edges are not perfect by any means and they're not smooth, but we are gonna fix that with the sander. My mom's laughing in the background, rude. <laughs> And we are going to route the edges and it's going to be beautiful. You just watch and see. Okay, to fix um, our jaggedy cut on this board, we used a drum sander. And so all that is is a piece of sandpaper that's on a round circle that actually fits into a drill. And so we just actually put that on the drill press and then laid the... Uh, board up on there and then just moved it back and forth until we smoothed out all of those jagged cuts, <laughs> jagged um, edges that we had from our cuts that were not quite perfect. Um, but by doing this, we were able to get it nice and smooth, which will prepare it for um, the router, which we're going to use to round off the edge there so that it looks a little bit more professional. All right, we have, and I say we, and I don't mean Steph and I, I mean this is where we let my husband do the work. We put a um, round over bit in the router, and we let him do this because he is much better at this than we are. Um, and he just went all along the edge of that board and just did a nice round over edge. And as you can see here, it looks fabulous now. We have the headboard now ready to do the upholstery on it and we are going to upholster all the way from the top and we're going to upholster all the way down to here. And so we need to take care of this void and so what we're going to do is we're going to take some poster board, some cardboard, lightweight cardboard, and we're going to staple that on the wood before we put our foam layer down. The first step to upholstering the bed is to cover the wood with some foam. We decided to get these mattress toppers. We got them at Walmart. Uh, full size was about $13. It's just a lot cheaper than getting foam at the fabric store. So that's our little tip on that. So we have lined it up so you can see that that is the topper and we are just going to use a Sharpie kind of feel where the wood is and make a little template. And we're gonna have this go in about half an inch inside the wood frame that we have waxed. Once the pattern has been traced, we're ready to cut and we found the best trick ever, kitchen shears. These are little Betty Crocker from the dollar store they cut foam fantastically. Look at that. Better than the other scissors I have around my house. This doesn't need to be perfect, but the pattern will just help us get it close to the shape. Now we're going to use our pneumatic staple gun to secure these into place. This is just so much easier than a handheld staple gun, but we upholstered like that for years. And you can also see, I'm only putting a few in here. It's really just to hold it into place. So we'll just go around the whole bed frame, secure it. The mattress topper has been secured, just, you know, sporadically, not too many staples. We now have a thin piece of batting that we have laid across this whole thing. And again, we will just use a couple staples here and there to hold this into place. Look 
going to mark center on our batting so that we know where to line our stripes up so that our fabric is actually straight. Now we can easily line up the stripe to the Sharpie mark we have put. And we're going to tack that down with our staple gun. So we've got three staples pulling the top tight and then we did the same thing down at the bottom just to pull the top and the bottom tight. Now we're going to come over to the sides and pull this, find the edge of where the wood is and do a couple of staples here. And then we'll just repeat that on the other side. So then you'll have it secured a little bit on each end and then we can work and then we'll work our way around yep. we've gone around the edge of the bed frame and secured about every three inches apart just to hold the fabric nice and secure we've made sure that the fabric was pulled tight the lines are all straight now we're going to go in and just fill in all of those voids i'm going to trade you spots because it's best to get the gun right up at that edge and I'm still pulling as I staple. So we will go around the entire bed frame filling in. That will secure the fabric nice and sturdy. Once you have secured all of the fabric with staples, we took some scissors and just trimmed the excess fabric and now we are securing cording we picked this up at Hobby Lobby, and this is so easy to secure. Just a hot glue gun. Just run a bead. So Need more glue. My glue fell out. <laughs> you think you're ready, and you're not. Here we go. So just run the bead of glue, and just hold it into place for a minute while it dries. So you get this nice border, it covers the staples, just finishes the look. Don't you love it? All right, we'd like to show you how we're going to assemble this into a day bed now. So this is the footboard, and what we've done is we've put the two footboards connected to the two rails. This is the rail that we um, actually trimmed and made a decorative edge on it because they were just straight um, flat boards. So we've put that on there. We've connected those just the way that they originally came connected. It's got some sort of a mechanism here and it's got dowels that actually come into the legs. So we've got that secured. The next thing we're going to do is secure the headboards to the other two rails, the two headboards. Now we're going to show you how we connected, the, how we're going to connect the headboards. So the headboard had little legs on it so that it would be up as high as the footboard. We cut those off since we're going to mount it on top of the footboard. So what we're gonna do is just hook it just the original way that it came. So it has dowels. Can you see those? I don't know. There's dowels at the end here that will slide into these holes. And then there's this big long screw, bolt, screw something. <laughs> anyway, and that's gonna go and hook it all together. We have the headboards now connected to the two sideboards. And what we're gonna do is just lift them up and set them on top of the lower baseboard pieces. And then we are going to connect them with a mending plate. That'll be our next thing we do. It doesn't look amazing. We have stacked the footboards with the side rails and the headboards with the side rails together. And we are going to use a mending plate to secure the two together. So first we're going to use our drill to make pilot holes. Now 
now we're ready to secure the mending plate with screws. Here's the finished bed. I cannot believe how fun this is. It turned out so cute. I love this natural wood finish that we have here. This cute ticking fabric really makes it just look antique. It almost looks like it was always meant to be upholstered too. I just love the way it turned out. And you wouldn't even know that it was two twin beds before. It just looks like a true French twin bed. So tell us what you think. Do you love this idea of creating a day bed from two twin beds? We'd love to hear your comments. Um, please let us know what you think. You can find more information about products that we used and details um, in our description section. You can also find links to social media and our website if you'd like to follow along. Um, we'd love for you to subscribe to our channel and tap the notification bell if you'd like to be uh, notified when more uh, videos are released. Thanks again for watching another Sunnyside Design Tutorial where we hope to bring your home to the sunny side of the street.